last time we discussed about uh, black body radiation, photoelectric effect, and Compton effect. Uh, I think you have gone through all those lectures. Uh, now, why do we study black body radiation, photoelectric effect, and Compton effect? I black body radiation, photoelectric effect, the compound effect of the way, So, you see, whether black body radiation, compound effect, photoelectric effect, all these are related to microparticles. All these are related to microparticles. Okay. Say, for example, for example, photoelectric effect. It is related to electron, which is a micro particle. Okay. Similarly, Compton effect. Once again, it is related to electrons. Okay. For, uh, black body radiation. It is also related to atoms and electrons. So you see, so all these effects all these experiments are related to micro particles means atoms molecules electrons protons etc so what we find we find that black body radiation photoelectric effect compton effect these these effects cannot be explained using classical physics okay that means phenomena related to micro particles cannot be explained okay phenomena related to to micro particles okay cannot be cannot be explained explained using using classical physics using classical physics or we can say that classical physics is not applicable to micro particles okay so in case of micro particles we have to use quantum mechanics only so that is our conclusion okay so after studying black body radiation photoelectric effect compton effect after studying all these effects what is our conclusion our con conclusion is that phenomena related to micro particles cannot be explained using classical physics and we are to use quantum mechanics only okay that means for electrons protons atoms molecules etc we are to use quantum mechanics not classical physics so this is our ultimate conclusion okay well now your syllabus your syllabus next contains de Broglie hypothesis electron diffraction experiment Heisenberg's uncertainty principle so we have already discussed about these things okay de Broglie hypothesis de Broglie hypothesis so you know this with any mm, any matter any matter consists of two types of behavior particle and wave okay and if a particle with mass m moving is moving with velocity v then the wavelength associated with the particle is given by h by mv one particle mass m it is moving with velocity v then the wavelength of the wave 
then the wavelength of the wave associated with the particle is given by h by m so we have already discussed about these things then we have also discussed about electron diffraction experiment i think i gave you a note on this so i am not going to discuss about this now what is electron diffraction experiment let me see that what is electron diffraction experiment this experiment will prove that electron will have electron has wave nature now de broglie did not experimentally verify okay now this experiment this experiment proves de broglie's hypothesis okay so we have already discussed about this next we also discuss about heisenberg's uncertainty principle heisenberg's uncertainty principle okay we discuss about this position and momentum of micro particle cannot be obtained accurately at the same time okay position and momentum of micro particle cannot be obtained accurately at the same time and mathematically we write it like this del x into del p x is greater than equal to h by 4 pi or we can write or we can write del x into del p x is approximately equal to h by 4 pi or we can write del x m del p x is greater than equal to h by 4 pi or approximately equal to h by 4 pi so we have already discussed about all these things okay so let us not repeat let us not repeat so next let us discuss about one thing state of a system state of a system state of a system now as you know this state does not mean solid liquid gas okay what is what we mean by state of a system what we mean by state of a system this is state of a particle state of a particle this is the particle what is the state of the particle okay now in order to know state in order to know state what are the things we have to know first we have to know position 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 means coordinate coordinates position means coordinates x y z position second we have to know forces acting on it forces acting on it what are the forces that is acting on this particle acting on this particle and as a result of this force what is the velocity okay what is the velocity okay now in case of classical physics in case of classical physics in case of classical physics we know position accurately there is no uncertainty we know force accurately again there is no uncertainty we know velocity accurately so there is no uncertainty okay so in case of a classical particle position is accurately known force is accurately known velocity of the particle is accurately known so state is accurately known okay state is accurately now 
if we know the present state of the particle classical particle if we know the present state of of the classical particle we can predict what will be the state after some time after some time we can predict that because uh, we have so many laws in physics you know newtonian physics okay mm. <coughs> so using those laws we can predict okay so so in order to know the state we have to know all these things okay but position means coordinate okay say this is a particle here this is a particle here so it has some position that means coordinate if we apply force its position may change position may change if we apply a force it may have some velocity velocity means change in position with time what is velocity it is nothing but change in position with time okay so ultimately state depends ultimately state depends on state depends on state depends on uh, let me call state as psi capital psi so state depends on depends on position that is coordinate position and time and time okay we say that state state is a function state is a function of position x y z position means coordinate and time state is a function of this okay so we discuss about all these things okay still i repeat so in case of classical particle in case of classical particle we know the state accurately why because we know the position coordinate accurately we know the velocity accurately okay there is no uncertainty there is no uncertainty so we know the state of a classical particle accurately but in quantum mechanics in quantum mechanics what happens neither we know position accurately nor we know velocity accurately there will always be some uncertainty okay so in quantum mechanics quantum mechanics what happens in quantum mechanics what happens so position is not accurately known velocity is not accurately known so psi is not accurately known okay so psi is not accurately known let me call it quantum mechanics psi is not accurately known okay but we we know that state state depends on position and time that means state it means state state is a function of position and time okay so i repeat in classical physics in classical physics this is a classical physics classical physics position and velocity they are accurately known so state is accurately known classical physics state is accurately known further <coughs> further if we no the state of a particle at some time then we will be able to predict the state after some time we can do that in classical physics but in quantum mechanics <coughs> in quantum mechanics what happens in quantum mechanics what happens 
we do not know the position accurately. Neither we know the velocity accurately. So there will be always some uncertainty. Okay? But we know, but we know that state depends on position and time. That is state is a function of this. Okay? Now how state, how state depends on this? How state depends on this? Regarding that, we have an equation which is called Schrodinger's time dependent equation. Schrodinger's time dependent equation. Okay, let me repeat. <coughs> so, suppose y, y is a function of x. Okay, that means value of y depends on x. But how y depends on x? For that we must have an equation. Equation may be like this. Equation may be like this. Equation may be something else. Okay, so if we say y depends on x, naturally question will come how y depends on x. For that what we need? We need an equation. So the equation may have different, different forms. Okay. After all we need an equation. Similarly, state, psi. Psi depends on x, y, z and t. But how psi depends on this? Just like this. Y depends on x. How y depends on x? We need equation. So psi depends on this. <coughs> Question is how psi depends on this? For that we have an equation which is known as Schrodinger's time dependent equation. And for one particle, for one particle of mass m, m with coordinate with coordinate x y z the equation is Schrodinger's time dependent equation is minus h bar by i del psi del psi del t equal to minus h bar square by 2m del 2 psi del x square del 2 psi del y square del 2 psi del z square plus p psi so this is the Schrodinger's equation for one particle with mass m and coordinate this equation is this so this is equation number one this is equation number one so obviously here psi depends on x y z and t here psi is a function of psi is a function of this psi this psi is actually this this psi is actually this is this we have not written here x y z t we have not written here x y z t but this this means this means this only okay now let us see another another example suppose uh, we are writing we are writing uh, we are writing the Schrodinger equation for a system of system of two particles particles one with mass m1 and coordinate and coordinate 
घूर्णेत x1 y1 z1 the other the other with mass m2 and coordinate x2 y2 z2 okay now we are having a system of two particles okay suppose hydrogen atom hydrogen atom okay there is one nucleus and one electron so hydrogen atom is a system of two particles okay two particles mass m1 mass m2 coordinate x1 y1 z1 coordinate x2 y2 z2 like that okay so for this system schrodinger equation will be for this system schrodinger equation is again minus h bar by i del psi del t equal to minus h bar square by 2 m1 okay del 2 psi del x1 square del 2 psi del y1 square del 2 psi del z1 square similar plus plus similar term for the second particle similar term for the second particle plus plus means it will be minus minus h bar square by 2 m2 del 2 psi del x2 square del 2 psi del y2 square del 2 psi del z2 square plus plus p psi let me write p p is the potential energy okay let me write potential energy as p p is the potential energy let me write p is now here in this equation this psi this psi is a function of x1 y1 z1 x2 y2 z2 and t this psi is a function of this this is the equation number this is equation number two okay equation number two so in this way for a system of n for a system containing containing n number of particles n number of particles okay for a system of for a system containing n number of particles this Schrodinger's equation will be similar minus h bar square by i del psi del t equal to minus h bar square by 2 m1 del 2 psi del x1 square del 2 psi del y1 square del 2 psi del z1 square okay plus plus means minus minus similar term this okay similar term this then minus h bar square 2 m n number of particles n number of particles del 2 psi del x n square del 2 psi del y n square del 2 psi del z n square okay 
let me write potential energy as V. This. So this is the equation. Okay, this is the equation. This is for system containing n number of particles. So this is for first particle, then second particle, then third particle, then fourth particle, up to n number of particles. Okay. Now here, here psi will be a function of, here psi will be a function of x1, y1, z1, x2, y2, z2, x2, y2, z2, up to lastly, lastly, z n, z n n t. So you see, so you see a, here only one particle psi is a function of if i neglect time if i neglect time psi is a function of three variables x y z okay two particles two particles if i neglect time once again psi is a function of six variables okay so n number of particles once again if i neglect time psi will be a function of 3n number of variables 3n 3n number of variables okay so this is psi this is how we write the schrodinger equation for different system and of course this is time dependent equation time dependent equation now equation was given now what is the meaning of psi what is the physical significance of psi physical significance of psi no doubt psi is called the state function or it is called simply it is called state psi is called the state function or simply it is called state state okay now what is the meaning of psi so we discussed about this earlier still i just remind you so initially schrodinger said schrodinger said that schrodinger said that psi is the amplitude of the wave associated with the particle so amplitude of the wave maximum displacement okay so, according to schrodinger psi was the amplitude of the wave associated with the particle but psi cannot be the amplitude of the wave why in order to be amplitude psi must be a function of three variables only x y z okay so in uh, according to schrodinger psi is the amplitude amplitude say say let us consider one example say this is the pendulum so amplitude means maximum displacement maximum displacement so this is a point and this point will have this point will have only three coordinates x y z okay so according to schrodinger psi is the psi is the amplitude of the wave associated with the particle but this is impossible why because psi must be if psi is amplitude if psi is amplitude it must be a function of three variables only but here what we see as the number of particles increases variables also increases here six variables here three n number of variables three n number of variables so therefore psi cannot be the amplitude of the wave psi cannot be the amplitude of the wave next max born he gave he gave another interpretation according to born psi square psi square gives the probability psi square gives the probability 
probability of finding the particle at a given location okay probability of finding the particle finding the particle at a given given location okay at a given location now what is the maximum value of probability maximum value value of probability is one otherwise probability may be 0 0.1 0 0.2 and so on but maximum value must be one so psi squared gives that value whether probability is 1, whether probability is 0 0.1, whether probability is 0 0.2, those values, those values are indicated by psi square. Well, now, for example, suppose this is three dimension, this is three dimension, x, y, z, here we consider a very small volume, very small volume, Okay, this is very small volume. But very small volume. This is a dx, dx, this is dy, and this is dz. dz. So what will be the volume of this box? Volume of this box will be dx dy dz. This is the volume of the box. Now what is the probability of finding the particle within this box? What is the probability of finding the particle within this box? That is given by psi square dx dy dz. Probability of finding the particle. Probability, probability of finding the particle particle in volume in volume d tau what is d tau d tau equal to this d tau equal to this okay so this is the explanation of physical this is the physical significance of this is the physical significance of psi as given by born okay so this is the physical interpretation of psi. Now mathematically, 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 psi is a psi is a complex quantity. Complex quantity. And it may be written like this. Psi may be written like this f plus i z where f and z are real functions real functions okay f and z are real functions you know i is imaginary quantity root over minus one i equal to root over minus one you know this imaginary quantity so mathematically psi is a complex quantity okay an absolute value of psi absolute value of psi that is given by we write it like this absolute value we write this like this and this is equal to f square plus z square whole to the word half absolute value of psi it is given as this absolute value of psi okay now here if psi is real if psi is real z must be zero okay if psi is real z must be zero okay z must be zero in that case in that case absolute value of psi absolute value of psi will be f square whole to the power half equal to f okay in case of 
if psi is real okay now since psi is a complex quantity since psi is a complex quantity it will have complex conjugate complex conjugate of psi and that is written as psi star psi star and you know what is complex conjugate this is equal to f minus i z f minus i z now you, you see if we do this if we do this psi star into psi so if we do this so this will be f minus i z into f plus i z so a plus b into a minus b a plus b into a minus b equal to a square minus b square okay a square minus b square that will be equal to f square minus i z square i z square okay that is i square i square equal to minus one so this will be equal to this will be equal to f square plus g square and this will be equal to absolute value of psi square absolute value of psi square okay this so psi is a mathematical uh, one so mathematically psi is a complex quantity so it will have properties like this okay after all what is the significance of psi okay what is the significance of psi so it is a state function psi is a state function as we have already said psi is a state function and it contains it contains it contains all the information all the information regarding the system regarding the system it is somewhat abstract okay it is somewhat abstract we call it state function it is somewhat abstract okay and psi will contain all the information regarding the system every every information is stored in psi we think it like this okay so this is important every information regarding the system is in psi psi contains all the information regarding the system okay we think it like this now we have talked about time dependent equation we have talked about schrodinger's time independent equation now let us see schrodinger's time independent equation time independent equation i know i discuss all these things earlier okay in sem 3 still let me remind you because this is important time independent equation so from schrodinger's time dependent equation we can get another equation which is called called schrodinger's time independent equation i repeat from schrodinger's time dependent equation from time dependent equation we may get another equation which is called schrodinger's time independent equation so let us see how to find the time independent equation okay let us consider one particle one particle of mass m in x dimension okay we are not considering three dimension we are considering only one dimension so schrodinger's schrodinger's time dependent time dependent equation is equation is 
time dependent equation is minus h per square h per by i del 2 psi del t equal to minus h bar square by 2m mass is m and we have only x dimension so equation will be del 2 psi del x square since we have taken only x dimension there will not be y there will not be z okay then plus v psi and this is the equation number 4 okay equation number four. now here 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 this psi this psi is a function of this psi is a function of x and t only two variables okay only two variables now let us imagine let us imagine that psi this psi this psi is a product of two functions f t psi x now this is capital psi capital psi capital psi and this is a small psi you see you have to maintain this difference otherwise everything will be wrong okay so here we imagine we imagine that this psi this psi this psi this psi is equal to this into this this into this where ft ft is a function of t and independent of independent of x similarly psi x psi x is a function of x and independent of t that means what we have done we have expressed this psi we have expressed this psi as a product as a product of two independent functions this psi this psi has been expressed as a product of two independent functions and we assume this this is this function is independent of x this function is independent of t that means these two functions are independent so uh, we are expressing psi as this okay now here what we find oh, sorry not not this sorry here what we find we have first difference first di differentiation with respect to time and second differentiation with respect to x first differentiation with respect to time second differentiation with respect to x okay now this is a 5 so from 5 from 5 what do we get we differentiate with respect to t del psi del psi del t we are differentiating with respect to t when we differentiate with respect to t this will be constant this will be constant so this will be equal to psi x into f dash t f dash t similarly if we differentiate with respect to x with respect to x double differentiation double differentiation so psi del 2 psi del x square del 2 psi del x square equal to now we are differentiating with respect to x x then ft is constant so ft is constant and this will be psi double dash x psi double dash x okay now we replace these values 
we replace these values here. For this, for this, we will write this, and for this, we will write this. Okay, so from four. So from four, what we get? So from four, what we get? Minus h bar by i. Okay. Psi x f dash t f dash t equal to minus h bar square by 2m okay then f t f t psi double dash x x okay plus p psi p psi equal to f t psi x f t psi x capital psi capital psi equal to f t psi x okay we are getting this now we divide both sides by this we divide both sides by this okay dividing both sides by this what we get minus h bar by i this is psi x cancel so f dash t by f t equal to minus h bar square by 2m so f t cancels so we get psi double dash x by psi x plus p this is the equation 6 okay this is equation x. Now, what do you mean by say f dash x? What do you mean by f dash x? f dash x means d. Okay, f dash x means d f x by d x. D f x by d x. Similarly, what is f dash t? What is f dash t? What is f dash t? This is equal to d dt by ft, d dt ft, d dt ft, okay. That means f dash t, f dash t means we are differentiating with respect to t, f dash t means we are differentiating with respect to t. So when we differentiate with respect to t, then this will be constant because there is no t okay we are differentiating with respect to t so this will be constant similarly here we are differentiating with respect to x so this will be constant so what we find this is equal to some constant this is equal to some constant okay this is equal to some constant this is equal to some constant so as a result what we get okay or we can say that left hand side is independent of x right hand side is independent of t okay we can write like this left hand side is independent is independent of x right hand side is independent of t t and since they are equal since they are equal so what we can write so we can write that so we can write that minus h bar by i f dash t f t equal to minus h bar square by 2m psi double dash x by psi x plus p equal to some constant suppose a this this is constant okay this is constant this is equal to constant this is equal to constant so this is equal to this is equal to some constant and i write constant as e 
so we get two equations so we get two equations so one equation is this h bar by i f dash t by f t equal to e one equation is this so this is equation second the other equation is minus h bar square by 2m psi double dash x psi x plus p equal to e this is 8 equation 8 so we are getting two equations okay now from equation 7 from equation 7 what do we get i can write it like this so um, minus h bar by i f dash t f dash t equal to f dash t equal to d dt f t f dash t f dash t d dt f t and f t 1 by f t I can write it like this this is equal to e I can write it like this or or I can write it like this um, 1 by f t d f t 1 by f t d f t equal to minus i i e divided by h bar dt just cross multiplication nothing else just cross multiplication nothing else okay so we are getting this now if we integrate integrating 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 what we get suppose ft equal to ft equal to x suppose ft equal to suppose x okay that means 1 by x dx so integration 1 by x dx integration 1 by x dx equal to ln x we notice okay now 1 by ft dft equal to ln ft so integrating what we get we get ln ft ln ft equal to minus i e integration dx dt integration dt equal to t by h bar and when we integrate some constant comes okay say constant is say i integration constant constant is i say let me write let me write i equal to say ln a i equal to ln a let me write this then what we get so ln ft by e because if i write ln a okay ln a so this side minus this side minus so log m minus log n equal to log of m by n log of m by n minus i e t by h bar okay i e t by h bar so now what we can do suppose we have this say e to the power x equal to y so ln y to the power now ln log so log y to the base e equal to x if we have this so what you can write i can write log y to the base e equal to x and log to the base e this is ln ln y equal to x ln y equal to x log to the base e ln that means if i have this if i have this we can write like this conversely if we have this we can write like this we can write like this so ln y 
ओके एल एन वाई इक्वल टू दिस एल एन वाई इक्वल टू दिस सो व्हाट आई राइट सो आई राइट एफ टी बाय ए इक्वल टू ई टू डी बार माइनस आई ई टी बाय एच बार हेंस एफ टी इक्वल टू ए इनटू ई टू डी बार माइनस आई ई टी बाय एच बार सो बेसिकली व्हाट आई एम डूइंग I am finding out the value of the function f t. Okay. So basically, what I am doing, I am finding out the finding out the value of the function f t. F t. Okay. So from equation seven, from equation seven, we can find out the value of the function f. T. Similarly, from equation eight, equation eight. So equation eight, what we can write? Minus h bar square by two m. Okay, psi double dash x plus p psi x p psi x equal to e psi x multiplying by psi x. Just multiplying by psi x. Okay, multiplying by psi x, what I get? I get this. Okay, or or I can write like this: minus h per square by two m psi double dash x. That means d two d two psi x by d x square. d2 psi x by dx square plus p psi x equal to e psi x. Now this can be written like this: or minus h bar square by 2m d2 psi by dx square. In place of psi x, we may write just psi. Plus p psi equal to e psi. So this is known as the Schrödinger's time-independent equation. This is known as the Schrödinger's time-independent equation. This is a, this is nine, okay, and this is a ten. This is Schrödinger's. Schrodinger's time independent equation in x dimension of course for a particle of for a particle of mass m okay schrodinger's time independent because there is no time t is not there so schrodinger's time independent equation for a particular mass m in x dimension this is the equation okay so from time dependent equation we are getting time independent equation so basically what we are doing is that here we have got two variables this is time dependent equation time dependent equation here we have got two variables and we are separating the two variables we are separating the two variables x and t okay there are two variables x and t and we are separating the two variables x and t and how to separate first we assume this first we assume the function first we assume the function to be a product of two independent functions first we assume the function to be a product of two independent functions then we have this so we find this we have this we find this 
then we replace and simplify. This is called separation of variables. Okay, this is called separation of variables. So by separating the variables, we are getting Schrodinger's time independent equation. Okay, this is in one dimension. Similarly, we may get in three dimension also. In three dimension, what will be the equation? Minus h bar square by 2m. Now, del 2 psi, del x square, del 2 psi, del y square, del 2 psi, del z square, plus p psi, and this will be equal to e psi. So, this is the Schrodinger's time independent equation for a particular mass m n in three dimension x, y, z. So, here psi is a function of x, but here psi is a function of x, y, z. Okay. So, in this way, we get the time dependent equation. Now, here you see, here you see, we have solved equation 7 we have solved equation 7 and after solving this equation this is basically differential equation first order differential equation first order differential equation okay so to solve a differential equation means to find out the value of the function so this is basically first order differential equation first order differential equation and to solve a differential equation means to find out the value of the function so we have found out the value of the function this similarly similarly we can solve this equation we can solve this equation or this equation we can solve the time independent equation now, if we solve the time independent equation, we will get the value of the function psi. Okay. So, if we solve the time independent equation, you know, solving say equation, this is the 11. Okay. This is the equation 11. 10 or 11. Anyone. Solving equation. 10 or 11 uh, 10 or or 11 we get the value of the function we get the value of the function of the function if we solve psi then will the value of the function psi x if we solve 11 we will get the value of the function this okay this okay by solving the equation containing t we obtain the value of the function f t so by solving the equation 10 or 11 we get the value of the function psi x or psi x y z so what is the value of the function then what is the value of state function what we assume this is equal to f t psi x f t psi x so this will be equal to a e to the power minus i e t minus i e t by h bar h bar let me write it as psi x let me write it as psi x now if we calculate probability In case of real function, in case of real function, probability is psi square. In case of real function, probability is psi square. But in case of imaginary function, here it is imaginary, you see, minus i, i. This is imaginary. So in case of imaginary function, probability is this, psi square into psi. In case of imaginary function, psi, psi star into psi psi star into psi 
real function probability is this imaginary function probability is psi star into psi so probability equal to psi star into psi and that is equal to a psi star psi star means it will be positive plus i e t by h bar square psi x into a i e to the power minus i e t by h bar h bar psi x okay this probability so this is plus this is minus e to the power plus x into e to the power minus x that is it will be e to the power zero that means one so this will be equal to a square psi x square psi x square that means for this value of psi 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 probability is independent of time probability is independent of time so the value of psi value of psi for which probability of finding the particle probability of finding the particle is independent of time independent of time is called the is called the stationary state stationary state so what is stationary state state means psi what is stationary state it is the state for which probability is independent of time stationary state okay uh, so we have discussed up to this part okay now let us stop here let us stop here next time we will discuss about uh, will we have functions then we will solve some problems then we will talk about normalization orthogonal the orthonormal functions again we will solve some problems okay now let us stop here today okay